Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, what kinds of things there are grades for. So uh, there's two sets of things basically that get graded in the course. One is based on lectures. The other is a whole set of stuff based on a paper. On, on, and so let me talk about the lecture related stuff in this video. So uh, the lecture process of the course basically runs like this. It's based on readings. You do approximately one reading a week. So there'll be a reading from the textbook that you will start with. You'll read it ahead of time before the class that covers it. And you'll submit, in half the, half the cases, you'll submit a written reading response, uh, which will be uh, graded based on whether you've made a good faith effort. Um, on the other half, you won't submit a written reading response, but you'll still be expected to read the paper ahead of time. Okay. Once you get to class, then we'll talk about the we'll talk about the reading itself. One of the things I should warn you about: it's hard to read philosophy papers and interpret them correctly. So don't be alarmed if the first several times you really get it wrong. I, I joke and I tell people that the way this tends to work is that um, uh, you read the first paper and half of you will think I don't get that at all, and the other half will say I think it was saying A, B, and C. And you'll get into class and I'll say now a lot of you may have thought it was saying A, B, and C, but it isn't. It's actually saying D, E, and F. <laughs> and you'll be like, oh rats. So uh, I don't want you to feel stupid if that happens. It simply means that it's hard to read this stuff. And the point is that by the end of the semester, that won't be happening so much. Now, when you turn in those reading responses, I have a specific set of prompts for them and they tell you what you're supposed to put in them. I'll talk about that more later. But for now, I just want to say that you get all the, all the points if you give me a good faith effort. So if you completely misunderstand the reading and turn in a description of what it says that's completely wrong, but it's clear that you did read it and clear that you did try to understand it, you'll get all the points. Uh, what you shouldn't do is just bluff and try to pretend you've read it. If I don't think you've read it at all, then you might not get all the points for that. Okay, so that's the reading responses. Those are easy points. You should definitely turn them in because as long as you give me a good faith effort, it will be it will count for you. Uh, so once a week, there'll be a reading. You'll do a reading response in advance. Then we'll talk about it in class. At the end of the week of talking about it, there'll be a handout over that material, which is available in Canvas. It'll probably not become available till after our discussion. And uh, that will tell you all the most important things to know. Now, part of the reason I provide the handout is because in class, I want to let the discussion just wind to wind around to wherever it goes, depending on what you guys bring up. And uh, But at the end, uh, I want to make sure that you have in, in writing what are the most important things to know. And uh, those will be found on the test. Now, later on, just before each test, there's a study guide which tells exactly what kinds of things I expect you to know for each test. So you should look at the study guide, see what it says, and then look from there to the reading responses, I mean to the, um, uh, the handouts and see what they say and just make sure you can answer the questions. The tests themselves will be primarily a multiple choice, but there will be some essay questions in them as well, but you'll know ahead of time what the essay questions will be. That's all available in Canvas. Uh, all that information is available. I'll show that to you in just a few minutes. Uh, the, the, the other element of this is that there will be some in-class quizzes, those will be extra credit only. You can't lose any points for them, but they're just going to be practiced with the kind of questions that the uh, test talks about so that you'll have an idea what kinds of things I ask. So the first one will be in a couple of weeks. I am not dismayed at all if everybody misses almost all the questions. Um, that just means you won't get any extra credit for them. But what will happen is we'll discuss them just afterwards, and then I will make sure that they the point is then hopefully you'll understand what kinds of things to be expecting, and it'll do a lot better on the test where it actually will count for some, for a lot. All right, let me show you a, a few things about this. First of all, you can see the reading responses actually showing up on the, on the, on the things due. So let me click on this meditation. The first reading res response due is, from, is for Wednesday, August 28th. It's called from something called Meditations on First Philosophy by Descartes. So that's in the textbook. If you click on the assignment, it will tell you uh, where it is, Meditations on First Philosophy. And you notice it says submit a one-page reading response in which you briefly summarize the reading <coughs> and give your own reaction to it. As you respond, be sure to answer these two questions, and it gives you two questions. So here's what I want. I want, number one, a summary of the reading, and secondly, your reaction to it. Now, I don't mean critique it as a piece of writing. Don't tell me, did you think he was clear or unclear, or he was a good writer or a bad writer. I, that's fine, but I don't really care about that. Tell me, do you agree with his, his ideas or disagree with the, his ideas? Um, tell me uh, things that you really followed pretty clearly and things that were confusing to you uh, also, as, if you want. And then as you write those, as you give that response, build into it your answer to the two questions. So don't say, here's my response, then here's question one, here's question two. Just as you talk about, as you summarize the reading, uh, answer question number one. If Descartes could be dreaming or deceived by an evil demon, how does he know for sure that he exists? When you summarize the reading, talk about how he thinks he knows for sure that he exists, and so on. So that's what I'm looking for. About a page 
I don't really care if it's exactly a page, but if you give me only a couple sentences, I may not give you any credit for this. But if you give me about a page, and if you sort of prove to me that you read the, the reading and sort of tried to wrestle with it, um, then that should be fine. So that's the way that looks. Sometimes the reading responses don't have anything for you to do. Uh, here's one on Hume. If you click on that, oh, that does have something for you to do. Let me go find one that doesn't. Uh, Gettier, Gettier. If you click on this one, you'll notice it says, be ready to answer this question in class. And it just gives you some questions, uh, or a question to think about to be ready for class. You're still supposed to read it, but you don't have to turn anything in. All right, second, I want to go to the um, modules and show you the uh, what the study guide for the exams looks like. Well, let me uh, yeah, let me show you what the study guide for the exams look like. So let me open up the first study guide for test one, and we'll take a look at that. Um, you can see here that it says that the exam will have, it gives you what the format of the test will be like, 35 multiple, multiple questions worth an hour and 15 minutes each, I mean worth two points each, and it'll take an hour and 15 minutes. Here's a long list of all the things you need to know from the first unit. There's a lot of bullet points, about 35 questions covering all those things. At the bottom, there are two essay questions that you should be expected to have to answer. So that's pretty clear. If you know exactly everything that shows up on the test study guide, <coughs> you'll probably do pretty well on the test. The only thing to watch out for is the multiple choice questions are actually harder than the essay. The multiple choice questions come in two, point, two parts, or two kinds, I guess I should say. One is the kind of question where if you just read the handouts and memorize the materials, you can just simply answer them without even understanding them. You can just answer them. But the other half, about half the questions are based on you really understanding the material. So for example, we'll talk about what validity of an argument means. And one question might be, validity means what? A, this, B, this, C, this, or D, this. And you could answer that just by having memorized the definition. But a, m a more typical question might be, here's an argument. Is it valid or not? And then you'd have to be able to answer that based on understanding the definition. So just make sure that you understand what's going on. There aren't a whole lot of things that we cover in this class, not a whole lot of facts, but there's a lot of very complex and subtle concepts. And that'll be the trickiest part. There'll be lots of philosophy that you'll be thinking, I just don't even quite understand what they're getting at. OK. Uh, as I said before also, in the modules at the very bottom, uh, under term paper, there's a, an, a one document called assignment information, including info about term paper, that talks about what you need for every different type of assignment. And so that'll include the, uh, the information about the um, reading responses as well. Okay, I think that's all I needed to tell you about the readings. Uh, oh, let me say a little bit about the textbook. We'll talk about it a little bit more later on. But the textbook is um, an anthology. What that means is it's a list of different papers by different philosophers. And we're not going to cover very many. We're not expected to cover very many. We're going to cover about 10 readings during the semester. And of those, about four or five will actually come from somewhere other than the textbook. So you're only going to use about five of the readings in the textbook during the semester as far as the lecture part of the course goes. But that's sort of par for the course. It's not expected to be a textbook that we cover every part of. It's expected to be something that we draw from, that I draw from, to have you read certain things. Now, there is some other textbooky stuff like uh, in, the, in the text itself. There's a couple of introductory sections. And at the beginning of each unit, they, ha they discuss some of the writing readings. So you're welcome to look at those. But for the most part, um, the book will is not really a textbook. It's really a collection of papers. So realize that's how that works. Uh, there are three units to the course in the readings. And so let me uh, just show you a little bit about that. I'll go back to the home. Each unit has its own test. Each unit has its own focus. Matter of fact, um, well, I'll leave it there. Each unit has its own test or its own focus. And um, the main thing to know is that the first whole unit, which is about the thir first third of the course, is all about epistemology, which is the question of what we know and how we know it. The second whole unit is all about philosophy of religion, which is the question primarily of does God exist? Or is there any way to prove that he does or doesn't exist, he or she or it? And the, the third one is um, um, on philosophy of mind, which is looking at what is free will, what is consciousness, uh, are would computers be able to think if we programmed them well enough, questions like that. You'll find that all three units are sort of connected. The book itself is broken into about six different sections, and the first section is epistemology, or maybe the second section, I don't remember for sure. Um, 
I think the first section. The second section is on philosophy of religion. The third section is on philosophy of mind. Then there's a section on ethics, which we're skipping because there's a whole class for that. And then there's a section on existential issues, which is worth looking at as well. And uh, I'm, I've skipped a section somewhere in the middle. I think there's one, one on just philosophy, intro to philosophy in general. Okay, so that's a little bit about the textbook. Uh, in the next video or in another video, I will talk about how the paper part of the course works together and what you need to be ready for that. In the meantime, realize that one of the first things you're going to need to be doing is on Wednesday the 28th, before class starts, you have to turn in um, uh, Meditations 1 and 2 from Descartes. Or I mean, that is, you have to turn in a reading response about me the Meditations by Descartes. Now, this says, um, and you need to turn that in just before the class starts. I don't remember if that's really 9.30 or if I need to switch that, but you'll need to turn it in just before the start of the class time or earlier, of course. Okay, that's it. Thank you.